All right, what's up guys, how's it going? Uh, Mike the Tech here, just on part three of our uh, Endless Runner, our Rage Runner. And we recently got our player to be able to hit an obstacle, destroy the player, and then reset the game. So next, we're going to make our explosion look a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign. And under the actor, we're going to name it pieces. And I'm going to make the pieces a fourth of the size of my player. So 15 by 15. I'm going to make them the same size as my player because, I mean, not the same size, the same color as my player because I want it to be represented as my player. And under physics, I'm going to change bounciness to 0.2. Not zero, but 0.2. Now we want to apply the same kind of gravity that we applied to everything else. We're going to use accelerate. At 270 at a rate of 800 relative to the scene just like everything else and we also want them to collide with essentially everything in our game so we want them to collide with the floor we want them to collide with the red blocks and we want them to collide with the pieces the other pieces that happen to exist and finally we want them to spray at an angle so we want them to all go between uh, let's say 10 and 80 degrees so it's like a cone moving forward so when our player moves forward and hits something the pieces scatter in that same direction so we're going to use a ch um, change let's see change velocity and we'll place it towards the top and the velocity we're going to change the speed to 500 <coughs> and for the direction we're going to have it randomize a bit so let's go to random and for the minimum number, we're going to choose 10 and the maximum number 80 because 0 is right to the right, 90 is directly up. So we're just adding 10 to that so that it's not quite all the way up and a little bit above the floor, if that makes sense. So random between 10 and 80 degrees at a speed of 500. And we're going to go back to our respawn actor. And when our respawn actor is spawned, we want to spawn a bunch of those pieces. So I'm actually gonna type in spawn actor and choose the pieces. And we want quite a few of these, so I'm actually gonna copy and paste this using control C and control V. And one, two, three, four, or five. I'll paste five more so that there's six total. And let's see how that changes. Let's hit the preview game. And now we've got a bunch of pieces that fly out. That's kind of cool. Great. So now let's go ahead and create some lava for the floor. So let's go to our actors and create a new actor called lava. And we're going to make this red, bright red. And we don't really have to change anything else. It's not going to use real physics. And let's go ahead and go to our scene and add that lava anywhere that you don't want the player to be able to go. So let's go to actors and drag some lava down here. And we don't want it to be too close to, we don't want it to be too stretched on the Y axis. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. That looks good. We'll make that kind of difficult to navigate. And let's go ahead and stretch it out this way. All right, and you can place as many of these as you want in order to make the lava look more realistic, which you'll see what I mean in just a moment. But we just want to make it so if the player falls anywhere down here, He's not going to win the game. He's going to collide with lava. Now, in our player, right now, if we overlap or collide with the red block, then it does all that cool stuff where it spawns the respawner and destroys the player and loads the pieces, all that stuff. But we also want to check if it um, hits the lava. Now, there's actually an easier way to do that than making a bunch of... Um, a bunch of conditions 
for each one because we could add a condition and say let's add an event where we overlap or collide with the lava and then every time we add a new enemy we'd have to add another line to this but we don't really want to go through all that hassle what we can actually do is create a tag so um, let me find out where that is real quick so under tags on the right side we can actually tag this with something and say this is an enemy and then we can go to our lava oops I made our player the enemy we don't want that we want to go to our red block and under tags right enemy and then we want to go to lava and type enemy so now in our player we can actually choose actor with tag and then type an enemy and now if it hits either the block or the lava it will um, spawn the respawner so let's try that out I landed in the lava I got destroyed and after four seconds it'll reset the game now I'm running into the box it fell over and I got destroyed and it resets the game perfect but now we want to add some um, particles to our lava that way it looks a little bit more interesting um, you can also add some particles to our pieces so it looks like smoke flies off of them or something but we're gonna do the lava first so we're gonna use a behavior called emit particles and we want to emit the maximum number of particles so we'll set that to 200 with a startup time of one second and a lifetime of three seconds so our lava is going to last our particles are going to last three seconds each um, we want them moving at a speed of let's say 20 I'll make it a little faster relative to the scene and our size let's go ahead and have their size change actually direction first we want them the lava moving up so let's set it to 90 and you'll see that the arrow changes here too now size we want size to change so we're going to set it from 15 to 1 over the course of 3 seconds because our, our particles only live 3 seconds we also want the color to change from red to yellow over the course of three seconds and we're gonna set the angular velocity to something like 20 just so they all kind of spin now this is the important part so we want to randomize where they show up in the object so we're gonna to have to set an offset on the X um, coordinates so not on the vertical on the y we're going to choose the x and this is where we would input that if we had a specific spot we wanted to show up at if we type in zero then it's right in the center of the lava if we type in 10 it's a little bit to the right of the lava if we type in negative 10 it's a little bit to the left of the center of the lava so we start off in the center and that's really important um, to remember so let's go ahead and make an expression and click here to create an expression now we want to use random because we want it to be a random position somewhere within our lava it's going to pop up in a random spot and start moving up so we can't just choose um, a negative number that exists we actually have to figure out how wide our object is and then we can um, divide that by two to find out how much to the left and how much to the right we'd have to move to cover that ground so if we have an object that's 100 pixels wide then we would only have to move 50 pixels to the left or 50 pixels to the right in order to actually cover the entire ground of the object so in order to write that in code we're going to type in for the minimum because it's going to be a negative number <coughs> we're going to type in negative self size width so if it's 100 pixels wide, then it's going to be negative 100. No, we don't want the object to go all the way 100 pixels to the left. We only need it to go 50 pixels to the left. So we're actually going to divide that by 2. And so that if it's 100 pixels wide, the width is 
100 divided by 2, which is 50, so it's negative 50. We're going to do the same on the right side, except without using a negative number, we're going to use a positive number. So we're just going to use self size width. And we don't want to move 100 pixels to the right. Again, we only need to move half of that distance, so we're going to type divided by 2. So now, if it's 100 pixels wide, it's negative 50 to, ne to positive 50. And that should randomize where the particles show up across the entire set of lava, despite how wide the lava is. So if we make the lava short, it'll choose the correct width. If we make the lava long, it'll choose the correct width. So let's go ahead and hit preview and make sure it all works. And we can see that our lava is now animating. Now it looks like we need to add a little bit more size to it just to make it look more interesting. So let's do that very quickly before we go ahead and um, end the video. So we're going to change it from 25 pixels to 1 pixel over 3 seconds. And we're going to change the speed to 35. Now if we hit play, you'll see that the lava looks a lot more interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, uh, it looks like we have some sounds going on in the background, and um, I'll go ahead and start this back up in class tomorrow. So thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.